Chapter 9 Our Environment Our Concern A clean environment is essential for healthy living If we don't care we may have to face serious consequences The environment provides natural resources and services for humans as well as for all living species that are essential for quality of life and survival Therefore it is necessary to care for the environment For this purpose a knowledge of the environment in which we live is necessary we need to know the communities of living organisms their habitats their interactions we also need to understand the physical factors that play a role in maintaining life the science which deals with the study of living organisms their environment and interactions is known as ecology in this chapter we will be learning about what is environment what is habitat what is an ecosystem what are the components of an ecosystem what is a food chain the energy flow in the ecosystem ecological pyramids how human activities affect and alter the ecosystem and steps towards conservation so let's get started environment is important for the survival of all living organisms so what is environment the surroundings in which a plant or an animal or an organism lives is called the environment it refers to the variety of living and non living things along with the interactions that affect an organism plant or animal in an environment there are biotic factors which is the living component and there are abiotic factors which is the physical or non living component the components interact with each other in an organized manner in an environment this interaction helps the organism to survive and evolve what is habitat the place where an organism lives is called its habitat it is the natural environment in which a particular species or an organism lives it is a place where a particular organism can find space to live it can find food shelter protection and mates for reproduction a community of living organisms interacting with non living components in a specific environment is called an ecosystem it is a functional and organized unit of nature where living and physical environment interacts among themselves an ecosystem has biotic components which are the producers consumers and decomposers it has the abiotic component which is the water light temperature soil etc which form the physical factors each organism in an ecosystem is dependent on the other primarily for food and this forms a food chain a food chain shows feeding relationships it is a linear relationship of organisms each dependent on the next as a source of food in a food chain there is transfer of matter and energy in the form of food from organism to organism let us look at one example grass eaten by rabbit rabbit eaten by a snake and snake eaten by a hawk the arrow mark indicates what is eating what let us look at some other examples of food chain in our surroundings some facts there are to be noted in the food chain most food chains are quite short that is there are not more than four steps and another fact is that the number of organisms decreases at each level to understand these facts we must understand energy flow in the ecosystem plants derive energy from sunlight producers pass on this energy from one organism to another organism sequentially food chain shows how energy is passed on at each transfer about 90% of energy is dissipated as heat only 10% of the energy is transferred 
Since very little amount of energy is transferred, lesser energy is available to the animals at higher levels in the food chain. So, since energy availability higher up in the food chain is less, most of the food chains are short. One more fact is that as we grow, go from one level to the next, there are fewer organisms at each level. This is because energy is lost to the surroundings. For example, a lot of corn plants are needed to support the rat population in a field. Few snakes eat the rats and one eagle can eat all the snakes. As only 10% energy is passed on to the next level, the decrease in energy levels can complement the survival of fewer organisms. So, the number of organisms decreases as we move from producers to consumers in a food chain. The links in a food chain are never simple or rigid. For example, in the food chain that we have already seen, corn eaten by rat, rat eaten by snake and snake eaten by eagle, here the rats can eat anything else if corn is not available. For example, the rat can eat the grasshopper. The frog can be eaten by the snake or by the eagle. If the frog cannot find a grasshopper, it has an alternative source of food, that is, it can also eat the butterfly. Likewise, every organism in the food chain has an alternative source of food. This causes interlinking of food chains, which is called a food web. Therefore, in an ecosystem, the entire community is a complex interconnected unit. If you look at a food web, you will see that animals have specific position in the ecosystem and a specific functional role to play. This is called the ecological niche. Niche refers to the way in which an organism fits into an ecosystem. Example, in the African savanna, lion, zebra, giraffe, elephants all live on the same grassland but they play different roles in the ecosystem. So, if habitat is the organism's address, niche is the occupation of that organism. Within a biosphere, there are a number of major ecosystems. Biosphere is the layer of the earth where life exists. It is also known as ecosphere and it is the sum of all the ecosystems. There are terrestrial ecosystems which are determined by variations in climatic conditions. The type of terrestrial ecosystem found in a particular place is dependent on temperature range, the average amount of precipitation it receives, soil type and amount of light it receives. Example, if we look at the Himalayan ecosystem, the climate ranges from tropical at the base, that means at the base it is hot and humid and as we move ahead it is permanent ice and snow at the highest elevations. Kilimanjaro, Africa's highest mountain is also home to some of the most diverse ecosystems in the world. It is made up of five distinct climate zones. You will pass through all these zones as you climb up the mount in Africa. If we look at a forest ecosystem, it is usually associated with high rainfall and deserts, they receive extremely less rainfall. So we now understand that ecosystems are influenced and determined by climatic conditions. An ecological pyramid is a graphical representation of the relationship between organisms in an ecosystem. It was first introduced by the British ecologist Charles Elton. The position that each organism occupies is called the trophic level or the steps representing the organisms is called trophic level. In an ecological pyramid, producers are at the base. They represent the first trophic level. Herbivores or the primary consumers constitute the second trophic level. Secondary consumers occupy the level third trophic level, so on and so forth. The pyramid ends with top carnivores. 
Top carnivores are those organisms which prey on other organisms but they are not preyed upon. Example, the lion. There are three types of ecological pyramids. The pyramid of biomass, pyramid of numbers and the pyramid of energy. First, let us understand the pyramid of numbers. The number of organisms in a food chain can be represented graphically. Each level represents the number of individuals at each trophic level in the food chain. There may be an increase in size as we go up but there is a decrease in number. Let us take an example. Aphids are small and occur in great numbers. Ladybirds feed on them and they are large in numbers but not as numerous as the aphids. So these insectivorous birds they feed, they, they are the ladybirds, they are larger than the aphids but they are not large in number. They are present small in number and they eat the aphids. So later a single pair of hawks much larger than the ladybirds can be acting on the insectivorous birds and they can prey the ladybird. So this relationship is best shown in a pyramid. Aphids eaten by ladybirds and ladybirds eaten by hawk. This kind of a pyramid is an upright pyramid. Now the pyramid of numbers may also be inverted. If you take a tree ecosystem then you will find that the pyramid can also be inverted. On a single banyan tree there may be many insects and those insects may be eaten by many birds. So as we see the number, it starts with a single tree with many insects and many birds. So this type of a pyramid is an inverted pyramid. The pyramid may also be spindle shaped. A single tree on which there are many birds which are herbivorous and then those birds will be eaten by a single hawk. So this kind of a pyramid is partially upright and partially inverted and we call this spindle shaped. Next let us understand the pyramid of biomass. What is biomass? Biomass is the dry weight of the organic material of biological origin that is the plant material or the animal material. So the pyramid of biomass represents the quantity of living matter that is present at different trophic levels. Pyramid of biomass may be inverted or it may be upright. In terrestrial ecosystems, the biomass progressively decreases from producers to the top carnivores. So this kind of a pyramid will be an upright pyramid. Whereas in aquatic ecosystem, the biomass of phytoplanktons is quite negligible compared to that of the herbivores that is the crustaceans or the fish and then the carnivorous fish the biomass will be even more larger. Those carnivorous fish will be feeding on the small fish. So this makes the pyramid of biomass in aquatic ecosystem inverted. Next let us understand the pyramid of energy. Food is the source of energy for organisms. It is used in growth and rebuilding the parts of the body. Food in its nature is chemical energy and in the stored form it is potential energy. Energy enters the producers in the ecosystem from the sun in the form of solar energy or solar radiation. Only green plants or photosynthetic bacteria they can absorb the solar energy and convert it into chemical energy. This is because of the presence of chlorophyll. From producers, the chemical energy passes on to consumers from one trophic level to the next trophic level. At each trophic level, organisms will use most of the energy that they assimilate into their bodies. This is for metabolic requirements or for work or growth or for reproduction. So since biological energy transformation is inefficient, most of the energy is lost and it is unused. It is dissipated as heat. Only a small fraction, approximately 10% goes to the next trophic level. A pyramid of energy is always upright. It can never be inverted. 
because as it the energy is passed on from one trophic level to the next it is decreasing